Hey guys, thanks for watching the Best Practices Show. We take a look at the best business practices from the best dental practices all over. And you might be growing a restorative practice or a special specialty practice, thinking to my thinking to yourself, do I have to save all these patients and be a hero and learn how to do everything? Well, today we're going to take a look at that very question with a fantastic key opinion leader in dentistry, Dr. Chad Duplantis, and talk about when is the right time to actually do the procedure or ask for help? And what are some of the key components as you build a great career in dentistry and maybe some of the great questions you should be asking yourself. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, I wanna do two things. Number one, I just wanna welcome you for showing up to a great community of people where we're all in the same boat, just trying to learn and ask great questions and learn from some of the best in dentistry. And you're definitely gonna learn that today. And then secondly, wherever you listen to podcasts, I'm just gonna encourage you to subscribe. So. Uh, you can join us every single week. You'll see every single week we're going to be bringing you a brand new key opinion leader in dentistry just to help you create a better practice and a better life. And we're just so happy that you're here. Also, we take great show notes here. So after this particular show is over, you're going to see our writers will put all the links together. So everything Chad and I talk about, there'll be a link in there. You can always go back to the episode and just click right on the link, whether it be Chad himself or some of the things that we're going to be talking about, take you right to those resources because we want you to get the most out of this. And then lastly, keep sending us suggestions for shows. We're lining them up all through next year and you'll see uh, a lot of you are asking for some really good stuff, and this is the stuff that we love. So, Chad, I want to introduce you today. So, um, you and I are brought together by a great mutual friend and a great community, Dr. Michael Cohen. And uh, this is part of our best practices series in which we're going to be introducing the Seattle Study Club Symposium that I'm just going to tell you, if you're listening or watching right now, you haven't been, you just got to go and check it out. But I always love for our listeners to know who we're listening to and why. So, Chad, tell us a little bit about your story and who you are. So, thank you so much for having me. It's a real honor and a privilege. I mean, I've seen your lineup. I've seen your show. And so, just that I was able to kind of weasel my way in there. I appreciate that. Uh, but my name is Chad Duplantis. I practice in Fort Worth, Texas. Graduated from dental school in 1999. So, I've been doing this for 20 plus years now. It seems like yesterday, but... My gray hairs are telling me otherwise. Uh, I'm a restorative dentist. And, you know, I know we're going to talk about a lot of things, but I do a lot of different things in my practice. I really like to focus on indirect restorative dentistry, but that doesn't mean that I don't do other things because I certainly do. Um, just like you, you kind of gave it away in the beginning. I just have kind of figured out when to refer and when not to refer and, and what we keep in the practice and what we send out. Right. Now, you didn't always know that. And today, the topic that you and I chatted about before we went live is you, you can't always be the hero. We're going to talk about what that means. But um, tell us a little bit when it, when it comes to growing a practice, you learn things about yourself in this journey yeah. you're like okay because you do I, tell me that if this is true you do have the natural inclination to think to yourself i could do this do you, you mean sure like do. Yeah. yeah so what about you tell us about your evolution in that like did you learn the hard way did you have some mentors along the way like what why is this topic so important about you know it, it's a great question because i i think that every young dentist um at least the ones that i've spoken with have have a couple of fears that they graduate from dental school with the first is the fear of failure you know you, you feel that you graduate from dental school you know everything um and you realize real quickly that you just flat out don't i mean if you if you know everything then god bless you you deserve a special award and a different degree than i got because I think you realize once you get out of dental school how little you really do know. Uh, the other fear that you have, at least I had, and a lot of dentists, I can't say that everybody has this, is you have this fear that somebody's not going to like you, a patient, you know? And I think that's the first thing that you really need to get over uh, when you start your dental practice, because in life, you can choose your friends, you can choose your acquaintances, and you can choose to garner yourself closer to them or further or distance yourself from them. It's, it's entirely up to you. In practice, you're thrown the general public. And there's going to be people out there that just don't like you. It doesn't matter if you're the nicest guy in the world, the nicest gal in the world, the best dentist in the world, self-proclaimed or not, people aren't going to like you. And that's okay. You know, and you just need to learn to not have uh, such a such thin skin and get over that. And after the first few years, 
if you start realizing that, yes, you are going to fail at times and that's okay, you're going to make mistakes and B, not everybody's going to like you, then you're going to have a successful practice or at least the foundation for a successful practice. Right. So. Now, you and I both have a special place in our hearts for the younger you know, people coming into this great profession. Talk about this. Let's say I'm a young dentist. And I'm like, Chad, I mm-hmm. totally understand this. But like, who do you listen to? Because if you're on this blog or this feed, everybody says, keep it in house. You're going to make more money. I have a lot of debt. Like there's a certain point where Chad, you got to figure out who you are. Would you say like self-awareness is an important part of this to, to say, I should not be the one place in this implant. Or, you know, if I'm a young dentist, where do I even start to unpackage all this? Well, you know, you mentioned something in the beginning, you know, and it's, it's mentors. And I was fortunate. I, I worked in a practice for three years after I got out of dental school. Um, it was an associateship. I, I didn't really want to buy in because of the financial obligation at the time. And, you know, I interviewed several people that were willing to sell all or a portion of their practice. And, and I fortunately walked into a practice three years in that had a dentist that was looking for somebody as an associate potential partner, which we're now partners. And he's been one of the best mentors I could have ever asked for. And is he the best dentist? He's pretty darn good, but he's one of the best people that I could have ever associated with myself with. So, you know, one of the things that you need to do right out of school is find somebody that does things the right way. And, you know, it may not be someone that you work for. It may be somebody across town. It may be somebody across the country but really find that person. And if you need a mentor, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and volunteer myself. If I can't do it, I'll help you find one. I'll find somebody, you know, we, we, uh, I've grown a huge network of dentists and I have several mentors at this point in time, but find somebody that, that is a a sounding board that you can sound off of and how they do things. Um, You know, and that's not necessarily the, the dentist that does everything in their practice. Um, it's the dentist that does a lot of things really good and knows what they don't do so good. And they refer those out. Yeah. I don't know who said, I think I heard it at the symposium. Like you'll never live long enough to make all the mistakes I did. So don't, don't try, you know, and you're, you're exactly right. Without mentors, I I don't know what I would be doing right now. So a hundred percent, you have to have a mentor and, and, you know, you can have several, that's okay. But I know that there's several people that have touched my career in one way or another and have made a profact, profound impact on the way that I practice dentistry and actually the way that I live my life, you know? Right. And so it's, it's really important to have mentors in your life. Right. And one of the things that you and I are going to talk about, you were talking with Dr. Michael Cohen, we're talking about referrals and building a network and it's kind of, uh, it's going against the grain because you might think, well, keeping all of this in house would benefit me how, Chad, if I start referring out the things that I don't do well, how the heck is that going to benefit me? I mean, is more going to come back? Because that might be a hard concept for me to get my brain around if I'm, if I'm building a, a great practice, right? You know, and, and you're right. But here's the, here's the point, and you made a very valid point, but I'm going to tell you that that is the wrong mentality. And I know that you don't mean it that way, but there's a circle. And I, and I think that uh, Robert De Niro called it the circle of trust. And, you know, but that circle is the patient. Okay. You've got to take yourself out of that circle and say, how is what I'm going to do going to benefit this patient? And so if you focus your practice around the patient rather than yourself, that's another key to success. So find a mentor and create a patient centered practice. If you're trying to do let's just say a root canal because you need to pay the electricity bill or that student loan or the lab bill or something like that. That's the wrong reason. You need to be doing the root canal because you're the best person that can do it at that point in time to benefit that patient. Totally agree. I knew you were going to say that too. And it just doesn't get said enough in dentistry. And as you've seen this, when you're with other Seattle study clubs or directors, there's a true camaraderie. I mean, all of these doctors love each other. They care about what's in the best interest of the patient. And through that, more happens. It's better for the patient. It's better for everybody involved. And that's really the heart and soul behind the whole Seattle study club network, which we're going to talk about in a second. Um, But I I do want you to go back to the Jack of all trades. Like, Explain like what that means 
if if you're building a practice, you know, where are some of the, cause you're going to be talking about indirect res- restorations at Seattle study club symposium. Um, what does Jack of all trades really mean for a young dentist? You know, I mean, you know, you learn a little bit about endo, you learn a little bit about surgery, you learn a little bit about, uh, you know, implants, periodontics and so on and so forth. And, and, you know, some people think that they can master all of those. And I, I'm the first to admit that I can't, you know, I'm really where I feel that my strong suit is, is in restorative and aesthetic dentistry. And so I try and focus on that. The other thing is, is pediatric dentistry. Am I really good at treating kids? Well, if they're well behaved and I can take care of them, then absolutely. I have no problem whatsoever, but I'm the first to admit, and it took a few years into my practice of, you know, I mean, I had one kid walk out of the chair on me, you know, and I I had no control over it. And so I chased the kid out to the parking lot, got the kid back in the chair, finished the restoration. Was that the best thing to do? No. So at that point in time, I started looking at behavior of that child when they were there for their, their profi. And if behavior is not on point, then it's probably best that I refer them to a pediatric dentist for a number of reasons, you know? And so, um, you know, you just, you'll realize a few years into it, don't take on the five canal molar endo, you know, maybe take on, you know, single canal endo, double canal endo, and then work your way up. But the other thing is, is that before you start taking on these difficult classes, don't just rely on what dental school taught you. Start taking some advanced classes in these procedures that you may want to do. A great example is implants. I placed, I, it, it, believe it or not, 1995 to 1999, I placed, I believe, six implants in dental school, and I placed another two in residency. Now, I know that that may sound like little to a lot of people, but we were one of the only dental schools and residencies that were allowing general dentists to place implants at the time. I've realized that I would need advanced training in that. And quite frankly, I've built my practice on restoring more implants than placing implants. I haven't placed an implant since I've been out of dental school and I'm perfectly fine with that. You know, I just know my limitations. I'm involved in the planning, but I don't place them because A, I don't really need to do that in my practice. And B, I don't have the time to take the advanced training. And if I decide to, I will take that advanced training. Yeah. And Chad, how much of this is around the word joy too? You know, like you got to do things that you enjoy doing. A hundred percent. Yeah. You probably run into dental students like I do and they come out and they go, yeah, I, I like endo. I'm a GP. Yeah. And I'm like, no, yeah. you don't. And they go, no, yeah. I do. I go, no, yeah. you, no you don't. <laughs> yeah. Like how much of it is you have to enjoy what you're doing? You know, and, and I will tell you, I do not enjoy molar endo and I cannot do it in a time efficient manner. So you know what? It goes elsewhere. I really think I would enjoy placing implants. It's just a matter of, you know, trying to find the time to take that advanced training because I'm not going to go start placing implants tomorrow. I, I mean, I could probably read a textbook and take a couple of online courses and probably do it and the state board would allow me to. But you know what? I know that that's not in the best interest of the patient. So I'm out. Absolutely. And also too, I think this is a real issue is isolation in dentistry. I talk to a lot of dentists and I'm like, it's hard. Like I'm married. I can't go home, talk to my wife about this stuff. If you're not in a study club, it's even harder. Now you also mentioned before we went live, we talked about mentors, which I love. Like you have three. I want you to talk about the evolution of a dentist. You know, you got to get out and start getting connected to other people. This hard, this year has been hard more than anything, but you've got to start surrounding yourself with other people that are like-minded, right? A hundred percent. And, you know, um, one of the things that that is not even dentistry related, but in order to succeed in any business, dentistry, any business, you have to be an effective communicator. And and so right out of dental school, if you feel that your communication skills are lacking, take a course on you know communication. And that's something that you could do online, but learn some tricks to help communicate better, because it's not going to only help you in your practice, but it's going to help you referral network as well, because all of the referral referring doctors that I work with, we have a very open line of communication and we communicate very, very well. And I think that that's key for any kind of, you know, business, but especially in building a referral network. And, you know, that really started with a lot of these specialists coming in and trying to meet me. But if that doesn't happen in your neck of the woods or wherever you live, then you know what? It's on you. Go out and meet the specialist. And there were a couple specialists like I didn't meet any pediatric pediatric dentist. So, you know, I went knocking on their doors and said, hey, 
I'm Chad Duplantis. I'm across the street. I'd love to go to lunch with you, you know, and it's not all about a free lunch because I took him to lunch and I paid for lunch and that was fine. Best money I ever spent because at least I knew where that patient was headed afterwards. And I had an open line of communication at that point with that specialist. I agree. You can't just wait for the mentor to find you. You got to go out and find them. And you've been a part of a study club. I have. How long? Yeah. I have been a part of study clubs for about the past uh, 15 years. Um, As far as the Seattle study club, one of my best friends from dental school, John Schillingberg started one several years ago. And uh, I joined John's study club about two to three years ago. And I haven't looked back once. It's awesome. John's a good man too. And he's got a great club, but they're important in your development, just your whole, I mean, complete development as a human being, as a, as a clinician, everything. You know, and, and I'll tell you, my first few years out of dental school, because I know that there's someone that's thinking about this right now, and they're like, I've got so many bills to pay. I can't afford another bill, which is a study club. And I wish that I hadn't have had that mentality or if somebody would have told me this, but I will tell you, it's not that you can't afford to join a study club. You can't afford not to join a study club because look at what we're going through right now. COVID. Our study club was the biggest support group there ever was because, you know, you can't possibly read all the fine details, but between 15, 20 of you all that actively communicate with one another, somebody's going to have the answers. And collectively, we're a heck of a lot more amazing than we are individually. Right. 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 Absolutely. And um, talk about influences, too. You mentioned three before we went live. When you talk about, you know, mentorship, thought processes, can you mention those three and why that was so important to you? um, Yeah. So I I speak and and I really uh, I'm invested in technology. I'm I'm kind of a a nerd when it comes to that. And I know there's a lot of people in the study club that are invested in technology, but I kind of have taken it to an extreme. And, um, you know, I'm also, uh, if you can't tell, invested in our patient care. Um, but my three uh, visionaries that I, that I follow are Steve Jobs, because I, st- I think that Steve Jobs is the godfather of multifunctional technology. If you want to incorporate technology in your practice, it better be multifunctional. Don't buy a one trick pony. You want something that can do it all. Um, and so I really look to the, the Apple iPhone is really the innovation of all technology and, and it needs to be a platform that can be built upon too. So that's what I look for in technology. Secondly, Jeff Bezos, uh, I believe if I'm not mistaken, or if it hasn't changed in the past few weeks, that Jeff is the richest man in the world. So he's obviously doing something right, but he created this monster called Amazon, which none of us can live without. We can't live without the iPhone. We can't live without Amazon. And Jeff Bezos said something very profound. He said, if you build a great experience, customers tell each other about that word of mouth is very powerful. Well, in dentistry, we just replace the word customers with patients. And it's all about building a great experience for your patients. And part of that experience is the technology you have, but it's also part of knowing what you can do really well and what you can't. And it's being an effective communicator and being able to explain to the patients why you're going to refer them. The third visionary is one that you and I talked about, and I think we're on the same page on this, but Simon Sinek. And it sounds cliche, but what Simon says is people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And so you and I both mentioned this beforehand, but you really need to understand why you do what you do, because that's what patients are buying into. They're buying into you. They're not buying into that crown or or that that composite filling that, that has stained grooves and looks freaking fantastic. They're buying into what why you do what you, they're also buying into how you treat them. Yeah. And that's really important as well. Yeah, I love his stuff. I just started reading the infinite game and I'm just I, getting into it. But I did like, too. I love it. You did yeah. you finish it? I didn't I have I, not finished it yet. No, okay. no, no. So the whole idea of not competing with others, competing with yourself in a, a game that goes on forever, I, I just love those thought, thought process. So absolutely. I think th- some of the biggest challenges is, are just, it's your problems really aren't your problems. It's how you think about your problems. And that's why it's so yes. exciting for me to talk to people like you or anybody in the Seattle Study Club is just getting involved and in, in, um, seeing bigger possibilities. Like the treatment plan, 
Now, I want you to talk about this because you're going to be speaking at Symposium, and I'm going to put up a little graphic here. And without prompting you too much, because yeah. I'm a big fan, but I want people to know what this is. Can you describe what is this? Now, is Seattle Study Club only in Seattle? Like, what is Symposium? I get these questions, as you do. Like, tell somebody what it is and what you're going to be doing at Symposium coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, so... So um, I'm, I, I really think I'm probably the low man on the totem pole out of this, this composite here. At least I've felt inferior to a lot of these dentists because a lot of these people are people that I look up to. But symposium is something that, once again, you can't afford not to go. I was so intimidated the first time that I went. Um, and, you know, I always say that, you know, when I lecture, sometimes I'm the faucet. But, you know, a lot of times... I'm the sponge and be prepared because this sponge will absorb so much information throughout these few days that you just, you, you just need to really have the time afterwards to take it all in and, and, and start to regurgitate it over time. But the one thing that's so unique about Seattle study club is the way that they vet their speakers. Um, additionally, the caliber of speakers and that's what I really like about Seattle Study Club versus some of the other groups out there is that this is this is an all star lineup and and you can you can take away so much from this from just a fantastic group of people. And on so many different topics, it, it, it really is. Uh, it's, it's an amazing experience. And, you know, I, it, it's something that I can't wait to go to or partake in every single year. Yeah. You know, the, the unfortunate piece about it this year is that we have to do it virtually, but you've been to many of them in the past. The, the education, there, it's, uh, there's nothing like it. It's no. the people that make it so special at the bar afterwards. And once we're able to go back to being together again, uh, I can't wait until it gets just, but I, I agree with you. It's a, I don't know how Dr. Michael Cohen does it, but he has a way of finding not just great clinical educators, but great business experts, great uh, psychology experts, great health experts, great customer service experts. I mean, it's an incredibly well-rounded approach to life, business, even parenting. There's some course, like there's yeah. great breakout. Last year, that lady was amazing. This book on parenting. She yeah. Was. Yeah. yeah, I think we could have all learned from that. But, you know, I mean, look back at it. You talk about non-clinical. Last year, there was a photographer there that had photographed some of the most famous people in the world. Yeah. And it was amazing. And, and Dr. Cohen has a way of finding these people. And, yeah. and it, you won't be disappointed. Yeah, you won't. And so um, tell us a little bit about the topic you're going to be talking about at Symposium and why it's so important in this day and age in dentistry. Well, I've been digital for a number of years, and um, I, I also like to be conservative in my preparation design for for my indirect restorations. So, you know, when you get out of dental school, you know how to make a really good crown. But one of the things that that we don't really think about is the inlay or the onlay. And even one step further is some of the newer materials that have transformed, especially in my time over the past 20 years, to be really fantastic materials. So my topic is really thinking outside the box, creating indirect restorations that are partial coverage using some of the most fantastic materials that there are out there. Um, and, you know, it's just something that I take a lot of pride in and, and try to be as conservative as possible with, with my patients. And, and it's just an approach that has served me well over the years. Yeah. Now go back to that. When you talk about the materials thing, I hear this a lot. How much have materials changed just in the last five years? I mean, aesthetically, the strength, all that stuff from your perspective, has there ever been a more exciting time to be a dentist and have these things at your fingertips? No, I mean, it, there really hasn't. I mean, there's, there's, there's a material for almost everything that you do. And, and, it, and I shouldn't say a material, there's multiple materials that are, that are fantastic but really where it all changed is with adhesion. When we started uh, being able to adhesively bond restorations in place, our, our, our treatment plans really saw a dynamic change. We were, we were really to, able to expand our portfolio, portfolio and do some, some things that were never thought of 25 years ago, even 10, 15 years ago. 
but materials are constantly evolving. And that's another thing with the Seattle Study Club. When we talk about materials, not only are they selective with their speakers, but they're selective with their partners as well. Mm -hmm. And so you'll be able to learn about some fantastic materials just by looking into some of the partner channels that Seattle Study Club has as well. Yeah. Now, again, this is a topic that comes up a lot. And I'd love for you to like, if you're a dentist, you're just kind of on the fence. This is a unique year to do it. You don't even have to be a study club member. You can actually right. join as a guest just to sample it. And I'm going to encourage you to do so. But given the perspective, I mean, even the world treatment planning, you know, championships, one of the things that's so fascinating about that is there might only be one proper diagnosis, but to watch some of the greatest clinical minds, you're like, wow, I didn't yeah. see it that way. Wow. Yeah. I did. It really bends your mind, doesn't it, Chad? It, it really does. And, um, you know, e even some of these uh, surgeons and stuff, even if you don't do these surgeries, just to learn about how they do it. And then from your perspective, if you're just a restorative dentist, say, OK, well, I'm not going to do surgery. But now that I know how they're doing it it helps me plan more appropriately. And one of the biggest examples that I can give is last year, I heard Christian Coachman speak. And Christian is so well known and so profound and, and, and fantastic at what he does. It, it encouraged me to not only, you know, uh, kind of follow what he does, but I took his residency this past summer and I've started implementing some of the things that he does into my practice. And it's just, it's just you know, you'll take away tidbits and then some of these speakers, you start following on, on social media. You know, Marcus Blatz is another one that I started following on social media and then following what what he does. And then, you know, it's just it's just amazing. And the camaraderie that may not come out of it this year because we won't be together in person. But I promise you, once you take this, you'll want to be part of this organization and the academic endeavors of this organization and put them into place into your practice. Amen, brother. It's pretty cool because they're always, there's always a humble human person, you know, being behind all of this and they do end up becoming your friends like Christian yeah. coach, you know, first you're like, wow. And then all yeah. of a sudden you're having a drink with them. And you're like, Oh, we're, are yeah. we friends now? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, type yeah. of a thing. So the world is smaller than you think when you put yourself in the arena with other people that are just, Hey, look. and it's really cool because everybody's there willing to help you. Now you also, I had so many notes on this. So I want to go back to one other thing that you said, because this is also near and dear to my heart. I love this profession. And then young dentists, one of the things that we always try to do is just inspire them. If they have two decades of practice or three, and you said, you know, two of the fears people often have when they start using failure, you know, and people that aren't maybe not like you, what advice or what good words of wisdom would you give a 32 year old dentist watching this who goes, you know, Dr. DePlantis, I understand, but it's like, this is hard. Like, what would you say if you could go back and speak to your 32 year old self, what would you say? I would say to immerse yourself in education. And one of the ways to do that is to set a goal. And you know, the Academy of General Dentistry is very near and dear to my heart. And, and you know, um, do I really care about the additional four letters after my name, which is, you know, fellow in the Academy of General Dentistry? And, and the answer is, yeah, I kind of do, because it gave me a goal that I had to complete so many hours of continuing education. And then I had to take the, take this exam that wasn't necessarily easy. Um and then I got to go walk the stage again, which made me feel really cool. But the, the point of that is, is that I had a goal. I was, I was trying to get those, those hours of education. And now my goal is a mastership, which may take a little bit longer with my other um, commitments. But set goals for yourself. But the biggest key is to immerse yourself in education beyond dental school. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this is a great start. The symposium is a great start and then find that one thing, you know, and for me, it was technology that may drive you. And that may be a field that you want to pursue a little deeper and whether it's implants, endo, you know, I don't know who'd want to do that. Pediatric dentistry. I don't know who'd want to do that. But, you know, the thing is, is find what you really like and then pursue that further. And then, you know what you become thought of as, oh, you know, Dr. Smith across town, that guy's great with kids or that, that guy's great with, with root canals. And, you know, um, it, it, it transcends. And, and so, you know, immerse yourself in education. That's the only way to do it and do that with the help of a mentor. I love it. 
I love it. Keeps you in the game, keeps you interested. Always challenging those things. Um, any last thoughts you have, Chad, as we kind of wrap this up that you would say? You know, I, I, I think we covered it all up, but, but, you know, just, just really just, you know, continue your education beyond school. That's the biggest thing that I can tell you. And, you know, um, you, you know, I, I'm going to give you a piece of homework and the, the piece of homework that I would give you is if you have not read Simon Sinek's book, start with why. And I think that would help you start creating a why for who you are, for who you want to be for your practice, maybe help you a little further along in developing a mission statement and, and it will help shape your career. Amen, brother. I love that. I would completely agree. I would completely agree. We'll stick around when we see goodbye. Well, actually, before you go, for the benefit of people listening on iTunes or Stitcher, if they want to see more of what you do, Chad, how do we find out who you are, where you're at? Um, where do I go? It, real easy. Uh, email address, drduplanis at gmail.com. Uh, I think you're going to put, a, put that in the links. I'm an open book. Happy to connect. Connect with me on Facebook, Instagram. Um, and then we started a group on Facebook a few months ago called Dentist in the Know. And it's a group of dentists. We, uh, we, we, we have, we're open to all dental professionals, whether team members, manufacturers, supply reps, whatever. And it's, and, and it's growing and it's a lot of fun. And I'd love to have you all join that too. Awesome. That's where I'll put you in touch with a mentor if you need one. Yeah. And I was in a private Facebook group that I could just inquire about like if i'm a dentist how's that yeah work? it's a private facebook group just three simple questions to answer and and you know it's open to anybody so awesome. you know as long as you pass the test you're good yeah awesome Did you guys have a podcast yet we just started the podcast yeah awesome. so all right yeah. so as soon as you get it i want a link we're going to put it in here so awesome. check it out it's the easiest way i think to just start the learning process where you're driving to work cutting the grass whatever like just Turn your car into a mobile classroom at the very least. And one of the things that we do do, and I'll just leave with this, is that uh, every week we have a weekly Facebook Live and probably the most uh, sought out portion of that Facebook Live. We have an educator on there, but the most sought out portion is, is we have an awesome dentist out of North Carolina that keeps us on top of all the news that's pertinent to dentistry. So it's been especially a hot topic during COVID because she's keeping us up to date with all the loans, the changes, the supply chain and whatnot. So it's been fantastic. That's awesome. So guys, check it out. If you're listening, dentists in the know on Facebook and then check out Chad's uh, podcast when it comes out. Also too, if you're just on the fence thinking about symposium, just check it out. Click the link below. I promise you, you won't regret it. Uh, or uh, you can find out more about the Seattle study club and how you can be part of a club. Dentistry is an awesome profession. Do not go in on it alone. You need the help of others to become who you want to be. So Chad, I really appreciate this brother. Thanks for being on. Thank you. Uh, I uh, stick around while we say goodbye to everybody else, but thank you guys for watching and listening. If you enjoyed today, just do us a favor, hit the share button, share it with your friends. Keep sending us suggestions for things that you want to see either from Chad or other uh, guests that we've got on the show. And until we see you next time, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.